Well, hello everyone. I'm so glad uh, for being at this opportunity and to thank WCN for being one of our major supporters, but also providing this virtual uh, expo to, to talk to you about our work in the Democratic Republic of the Congo uh, to conserve Okapi. Conservation today is all about striking a balance between the needs of people and wildlife. We have to find a way for the, a coexistence that's mutually beneficial to all of us. The Okapi is a, an unusual ungulate you know, forest giraffe. It's found in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which was Zaire. And before that, Belgium, this country has had unbelievable suffering and humanitarian problems since its very beginning in modern history. Uh, the, Kokop, the country is the most diverse country in Africa, it's the third largest, and it's the most uh, probably in the world mineral resource country. But uh, because of all these resources, there's lots of corruption and the, 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 the uh, population uh, lives in abject poverty. This forest in, the, in, the, uh, in this country is 68% of the total amount of rainforest in all of Africa and is a very important point of biodiversity conservation. The Okapi has, was not uh, discovered by modern science till 1901, the last large animal uh, discovered in Africa. And this video will show you a good reason why. The Okapis lived in the forest for six or seven million years and going uh, 10 feet off of camera, it just dis disappears into foliage. The Okapis eating, they eat over a hundred species of plants. And in the area they were found is very deep jungle, so it was really impossible travel conditions. So it's really amazing. It took so long to find this animal. The Okapi lives in the most biodiverse country in Africa, as also by choice of the Congolese people, their national animal, and the symbol of all this unbelievable diversity found in the heart of Africa. The Okapi is well known because it's because of, of the people's admiration for this animal, the ICCN, the Institute in Congo for the Conservation of Nature, the Okapi's on its emblem. It's also the rank, you're either a major colonel, depending on how many Okapi heads you have on your, on your shoulder. So it's really amazing. Radio Okapi is the most popular news source in Congo. Banknotes have Okapi and there's at least 50 to 100 companies that use Okapi in their name. So you don't have to go up to anybody in, in Congo and explain what Okapi is. Every place else in the world you do, but not in Congo. Uh, working to conserve an animal you can never see is difficult enough, but the, the conditions that are we are presented with to travel and meet with the people and to, and to help uh, patrol the reserve are extremely difficult. Poor road conditions, collapsing bridges, uh, and the way to get around is mostly by motorcycle. We have a fleet of 16 motorcycles that the educators and agroforestry team use to go all the way a thousand kilometers a year around these roads. The major threats to Okapi and Okapi habitat are illegal mining and also uh, insurgent militia groups who raid and pillage uh, just to get money or to be uh, control an area. So we have to be deal with that. and. Uh, it takes a lot to rebuild, but we have done it every time and we will continue to do so. The ranger's main job is to make sure these groups don't get anywhere close to where we are. Uh, to counter the threats, we have to work with a population of 50,000 people living around the reserve. Uh, people are conservation and these people, if, if they don't have a source of income, they'll be involved in illegal activities. So we have, we, we help the rangers and their job to protect against poachers. We provide uh, an agroforestry uh, program to help grow food in a way that doesn't, that reduces or almost eliminates slash and burn agriculture, which is still a number one threat to a copy. We work with the next generation of kids for education because they are gonna be the stewards of this environment in, in a very near time. And we work with women, we found that if, you, if women are on your side, you're, you can get to your objectives much faster. So we have women's groups in a lot of the big villages and they really are advocates for wise resource use uh, in the community. To do, all, to do all these things, you need to have talented, dedicated team. When we started the project in June, 1987, the team consisted of Carl Roof and his wife, Rosie, who is still with our project. And Carl was Swiss. Stickler for details, but also one of the most compassionate, loving persons I've ever known. Carl and I spent lots of time together, 
And we had an unfortunate tragedy with our original team, which we'll get to in a second, but these are the people that set the groundwork for what we have today. The other co-founder of the project was Jean Lamba, a Congolese. He was the glue that held us all together. Jean was a very young uh, graduate of Kissingani University when he joined us. I brought him to the United States and he stayed with me for six months to learn how to take care of endangered species and to get some skills in leadership, which he really applied when he got back. He rose to the rank of warden of the Okapi Wildlife Reserve and also associate of our project. He had a dual role. Uh, Jean and his wife, Dorote, lived in Apulu and raised their children there and instilled the love of conservation and wildlife as they felt their days were filled with animals in the forest. Dorote was a modern woman. She wore blue jeans. She helped the project, helped with her old copy. And I think it was her, all the other women in town were just astounded to see someone that wore blue jeans. And she was a very modern and uh, advocate for women in the community, which we really enjoy. And we still take, stay in touch with her today. The other member of our team back then was Kambali Sambili, a young student that came to us and uh, we saw so much promise. Uh, he, we, we, got a, we sent him to Makerere University in Uganda where he got a master's in conservation biology. He came back to our project and started our agroforestry program, which is one of our most important programs today. And he set the groundwork of developing that. Unfortunately, when tragedy struck in 2003 when uh, Jean and, and Kimbali and uh, Carl were killed in a horrible traffic accident in Uganda. They were returning from meeting with the uh, army rebel group that was in holding Apulu at the time and we were, they were negotiating safe passage for our workers. Uh, so this tragedy set us way back. We lost uh, all, a lot of experience, a lot of heart and a lot of uh, talent from our project. And Rosie and I had to take on the responsibilities and bring on new staff to take their places, which was not easy. Uh, Bears, uh, the son of uh, Jean Lamba, grew up in Apulu. He helped with the Okapi. He went to Kisangani University with support from our project. And uh, Bears was uh, very interested in conservation. When he wanted to come back to work for our project, I told him he had to work for someone else first and learn about other organizational structures. <laughs> And so he went and worked for WCS for four years and he came back to us in 2018 as our program manager. As our program manager, uh, Barris oversees our agroforestry, our women's groups, our education, our community health care programs, which is a big job all around reserve. He's on a motorcycle, continuously just traveling to our five offices and, and uh, agroforestry and, uh, and demonstration garden sites around the reserve. So he has a very busy life. And with that, I'm really pleased to introduce you to Barris to tell you about what he's do, some of the things he does for the project, just for you can meet him. He's a phenomenal person. He's gonna be the future of conservation in Congo and hopefully the future of our project. Thank you. Oui, salutations à tout le monde et je vous salue encore une fois et merci à, au président John Lucas pour m'avoir accordé la parole et donné l'opportunité de parler un peu du projet et de moi-même. En fait, je réponds au nom de Berce Sans Foissa. Je suis le programme manager au sein du projet WCG, donc Wildlife Conservation Global, et dans un projet de conservation des locapis qu'on appelle OCP. En fait, euh, je suis basé à Ipulu, en République démocratique du Congo, en Ituri, à Mambasa, au sein de la réserve de faune à Okapi. En fait, euh, je suis le facilitateur de, au sein du projet comme euh, la personne chargée à faire euh, la mise en œuvre euh, de nos activités, euh, de faire les suivis et évaluation de tout ce que nous faisons au sein du projet dans différents programmes, notamment l'agroforesterie, l'éducation environnementale, la maintenance, la logistique. Bref, je suis comme l'assistant de la directrice Rose Marie Rouf dans la gestion globale euh, du projet OCP. En fait, euh, je travaille pour euh, OCP euh, depuis l'année passée, au mois de mai 2019. C'est quand j'ai commencé à travailler à temps plein 
pour euh, OCP et ma passion et mon dévouement à la protection de la faune, à la protection de l'Okapi existe depuis que je suis euh, tout jeune. Et cela est venu après le décès de mon père, Jean Lamba, qui a été aussi parmi les grands facilitateurs des gens qui ont contribué à la naissance, n'est-ce pas, de ces projets. Et il a commencé à travailler pour le projet depuis 1987. Et j'ai pensé qu'après son décès, comme il est décédé jeune, je me suis dit de continuer à perpétuer l'héritage euh, qu'il avait euh, en matière de conservation euh, de la nature. Au sein du projet, nous avons un œil euh, très particulier avec euh, la communauté et dans un programme de conservation communautaire et de l'intégration de la communauté locale. Je pense que il est important d'impliquer davantage la communauté locale dans nos activités, dans l'implémentation de notre vision dans la mise en œuvre des soupes, de tout ce que nous faisons. Et un programme ne peut réussir, surtout un programme en matière de la conservation de, de, de la nature, dans un endroit ou soit dans une aire protégée qui est habitée, il est vraiment capital et important d'intégrer la communauté locale. Et dans mes attributions, je suis chargé d'avoir de, euh, des relations avec les autorités politico-administrative dans la réserve tout comme en dehors de la réserve et au sein du projet nous avons aussi une activité qui cadre avec les caméras trappe avec lesquelles nous faisons les suivis de la faune dans des habitants spécifiques et nous les faisons avec la communauté y compris les pygmées aussi et surtout que nous avons un œil très particulier n'est-ce pas, euh, aux communautés locales, surtout les pygmées qu'on appelle les moutis. Pourquoi Ils sont estimés comme les premiers conservateurs. Donc, ils sont nos yeux et nos oreilles en profond euh, de la forêt et ils nous rapportent euh, tout ce qui se passe en forêt. Ça nous permet un peu de bien cadrer euh, nos activités. Et le projet OCP travaille toujours avec les, 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 les pygmées et je devrais aussi vous dire que à Epoulou ici, nous avons un Okapi qui fait surface, qui accepte la présence humaine. Et c'est à plus ou moins un kilomètre de la station du quartier général. Et heureusement que nous avons quelqu'un de plus proche qui fait un peu le suivi de cet animal, c'est la personne de M. Guélo. Il nous aide un peu à avoir, euh, de faire les suivis de proximité pour la, maintenir un peu cet animal dans cet habitat naturel. En tout cas, je vous remercie énormément pour tout ce que vous faites pour le projet, pour tout ce que vous faites pour la réserve des faunes à Okapi et je vous encourage vraiment à continuer de nous envoyer vos appuis, vos donations sont vraiment les bienvenues et je pense que nous allons devoir faire meilleur encore une fois que nous sommes nous tous unis. Merci à tous et portez-vous bien. So another one of our team of, of young people working today to bringing up our skill set and, and uh, doing a great job is Manga Kiete. He's the one in the middle here. He was a ranger uh, and he came to us and started working with us as a dual role. There's a number, he'll have a dual role as a ranger and work for our project. And he went to, he, we got a WCN scholarship for him and he went to get his master's in uh, uh, community ed economics and which is really good for us dealing with the uh, communities. He's head of our education program but also he, he's, he directs our camera trap program. So I'm gonna turn it over to Manga to tell you about our, our, his work with the camera trap and, uh, and other things for our education program. Thank you, John, and thank you everyone for attending today. My name is Jean-Paul Manga. I've been working with Okapi Conservation Projects for six years. My current job is a conservation education program coordinator. I am in charge of conception, planning, organizing, and monitoring conservation education activities within Okapi Conservation Project. Before I started working with Okapi Conservation Project, I've been a game ranger within the Okapi Wildlife Reserve for 19 years. And I worked as a patrol leader, tourist guide, and head of 
the Law Enforcement Monitoring Unit. Timo Okapi is a group in charge of monitoring Okapi's presence in the wild by setting up camera traps. Timo Okapi includes Okapi Conservation Project staff and Okapi Wildlife Reserve Rangers. Camera traps are very important because they help reassure Okapi Wildlife Reserve managers and donors that we still have Okapis and other key species in the wild. This year, during World Okapi Day celebration, we are going to share Okapi's videos and photos with communities to show them that we still have Okapis in the wild. And this is a good way to sensitize communities on protecting, on protecting the Okapi and other key species. Radio broadcasts are very important to communities because they help the awareness message reach so many people at the same time and in the remotest areas. The, during COVID-19 pandemic, radio broadcast helped Okapi Conservation Project save many lives by sensitizing communities on prevention measures against COVID-19. Once again, I'd like to say thank you everyone for attending today and thank you very much to all our donors for supporting our work protecting the Okapi. So thank you, uh, Bear Samanga, for sharing a little bit what you do. I know you do so much more. It was great for the, the viewers to see uh, you and hear about what you're doing. As we move forward, we're dealing with the, the COVID epidemic in, a, in uh, Congo. It's not in our area yet, but you know we have, we're taking all the precautions. Our staff are all educated. There's hand washing stations you can see here left over from the Ebola epidemic. So the people are fully aware of washing your hands, social distancing, and no, no, no contact. So hopefully they'll do better uh, with COVID than a lot of other countries. Uh, the women's groups, we've worked with them to make masks and they're making masks and selling them. So providing masks for people and also a little income for them, which is really good. The, uh, the, the the team is working very closely to make sure that the communities are informed through radio broadcasts, through special uh, initiatives to make sure community members take this, this uh, problem seriously. We have a great team, which is not usually together. This is World Oak Copy Day 2019. We have four offices around the reserve. Our staff is spread out, but you can see we have a really great bunch. And these are the people that do the work on the ground and that we need to support them. We need you to help us support them. They're remarkably brave under really harsh conditions. And it's really, a, I, I'm always amazed at how much work we've gotten done during this pandemic shutdown, just because they are really working hard and they're eager to continue doing what they can to conserve old copy. You know, we have been working there and one of our major roles is to, is to create enthusiasm for old copy, old copy habitat. And that's with everybody. That's the job of all our team. And the re way we do that is just constantly be there to help people, to talk to them, and also to give them the, the knowledge they need to be that. So this is a women's group that is, we just finished a building for them. And this is the, a song they sang to thank us, but we want this enthusiasm to be in every village, in every town around the reserve for Okapi. <laughs> And with that, I want to close and thank WCN for this opportunity. Thank my staff for participating. And please, if you have any questions, please go to our website or contact WCN and we'd be glad to, to answer them. So thank you and have a great day.